Hey, Scarefest fans, this is Joe Lewis of Bonehead Weekly. <sighs> Criticism, review, whatever you want to call it, is for a new Netflix film called Fear Street. Now, technically, I'm only going to review the first one, and I think next week I should be able to watch the next two and review those together. So it's a trilogy. I read Fear Street by R.L. Stein when I was younger. If you're of a certain age, I'm going to get beat up about this movie. I've talked to a couple of people. They agree with my criticism, but I don't know how you guys are going to feel. Here's the plot. So it's Fear Street Part 1, 1994 is the name of this movie. Then there's Part 2, 1978. And then there's Part 6, uh, 1666, which is that's an interesting concept that they go backwards. What it's about is a teenage friends accidentally encounter the ancient evil responsible for a series of brutal murders throughout this town that have plagued their, the plagued, plagued from Eastern Kentucky, that have plagued their town for over 300 years. Shady side, shady side town. That's this town in the books. I don't remember a lot of the books. Now, here's what I liked about the movie. If you are uh, of a certain age, like I am, 1994, I was in high school. So all the songs that go through this movie, I know them. I enjoy them. The term is called needle drop. And that's where they take contemporary music. It's not a score. And they said it like the, the king of needle drop music is Quentin Tarantino. But one of the many, many issues I have with this film is also that it's just everywhere and it plays for 30 seconds like it's a sound clip and goes on it's not embedded in the movie it doesn't make any logical sense at that time they just try to play about 20 songs from once again i reference south park a lot member berries you remember the smashing pumpkins you remember alice in chains i don't even remember if alice in chains is in the soundtrack but i do like the soundtrack I, I like the opening scene, which stars Maya Hawke, who's getting to be one of my new favorite actresses. She's the daughter of Uma Thurman and Ethan Hawke. Maya Hawke can really act. It pretty much stops there. It, this movie is all over the place. It's similar. I mean, it doesn't go anywhere. These friends, we have a flashback. They kill somebody. He gets shot. Uh, this lady gets shot and gets killed in the mall. Uh, she the killer gets shot oh they finally got the blah 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 killer we follow these teenage friends around several subplots one's about love between these two girls one's about something else blah 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 we find out that they're over here at shady side and sunny side and one of them's broke and the other one hates the other one and there's some sort of then they accidentally find a witch in the or where the witch was buried in the forest on the way back when their school bus goes off the road because they're fighting each other because of these two rival towns. Yeah, it's a little scattered. It's all over the place. Did I like it? Not so much. Did I finish it? Yeah. Did it need to be an hour and 45 minutes? No. Am I going to watch the other two? Yeah, I kind of want to give it its due to see how this plays out. Because I'm interested in 1994 being part one and then the original origin being all the way the third part. So as we go backwards, I like the idea of that. A lot of it just doesn't make any sense. doesn't go anywhere. Why this witch? Where is it going? Maybe you'll get better with part two and three. But it's a lot of time invested in the three movies. If you have Netflix and you love the 90s, then definitely check it out. But unless you love the 90s and have Netflix and want to spend an hour and 47 minutes watching not a very good slasher film that turns into a horror, that turns into a supernatural film, that turns into something else. The, oh, the one last positive thing I can say about it, there's a few main characters that don't quite make it. No spoilers, no spoiler alerts. And the way that they get killed at the end in a grocery store is pretty cool. It's one especially, but I don't want to give anything away that's about all i can positively say about this so next week i'm going to watch the next two fear street films and let you know whether you should even bother with this mess this has been joe lewis of bonehead weekly